Welcome to the Charlotte Coliseum and welcome to the 1993 NBA playoffs. It's game four of the best of five Eastern Conference first round between the Boston Celtics and the Charlotte Hornets led by the Charlotte Hornets two games to one. Good evening everybody Steve Martin here along with Gil McGregor. Two games to one means for the best of five the Hornets can close this whole thing out with a win. Uh, with a loss though they must go to Boston for game five and therein lies the contrast in a game Gil that really points out the contrast that have existed between these two teams all along. You talk about a youthful team that likes to get out and run against an established team that doesn't want to run. The wheels versus the wheels you might say. The wheels belong to the Charlotte Hornets. A devastating win created because of turnovers and pressure basketball and getting into the fast break. You see the points off turnovers and when those are up the Charlotte Hornets are doing what they need to do. The will belongs to the Celtics. They must will themselves a win tonight Steve and they have to do with playing tough basketball particularly on the board and keep the Hornets from running. The key matchup that the Celtics really haven't had an answer to over the first three games has been at the point guard position. Muggsy Bones going up against Sherman Douglas. Well Sherman Douglas the on and off point guard for the Celtics given the responsibility to bring the ball down the court. Muggsy's going to make it very hard for him to get everybody else in the offense. Once the ball is given up by Sherman if he's not allowed offensive threat and Muggsy Bones can come over and help out against other people that are offensive threat. So what's going to happen tonight with the ball in Sherman Douglas' hands is going to be a big part of this ball game. So the Celtics are faced with a dilemma. Take it out of Sherman's hands and have D. Brown bring it up or does D. assume his role of being an offensive player now more so with Reggie Lewis out of the lineup? Well you know the Celtics must change their game plan. You don't lose by 30 and stay the same day game plan. So it is a dilemma for D. Brown. They need his offense. They need his ball handling but he can't You know, Boston Garden has so much tradition, and the Celtics have a lot of tradition, but the Charlotte Hornets have now started a tradition only briefly, and it's working so far. And that tradition we're going to bring you tonight that probably capsulizes what the excitement in this hall is all about. Right now, Proactive Solution has good news if you have a difficult pimple or sudden breakout and can't find relief. Because when you order now, you'll get the exclusive refining mask free with your three-piece kit. Just a dab, and the mask is designed to zap problems. It's fast. It's dramatic. Instead of hoping for an answer, use the mask, and you've got it. I use the mask for spot treatment sometimes. You know, I put it on in the evening before I go to bed, and when I wake up in the morning, you don't have acne, and you know, that's a good feeling. It works the fastest. It's potent. That's what I tell people. It's like my little skincare army. Call now and order the amazing Proactive solution to heal your acne and help prevent future breakouts. Proactive is the number one best-selling acne system in America called Best Acne Treatment by Allure Magazine. I enjoy life more. I get out there and I do the things that I want to be doing without having to, to worry about the way that I look. And now, you'll save 50% on Proactive when you order in the next four minutes, just $19.95. Proactive's really, you know, changed my life. It's, it's changed the way people see me, and every hour of the day, I'm thankful for it. It's, you know, like gold in a bottle, really. <laughs> and you'll have the refining mask to zap problems it's fast, as it helps reduce redness and calms your skin. For on-the-spot pimple control, I use the refining mask. Just a little dab, that's all you need. It's a proactive exclusive, and it's yours free when you order the proactive kit at 50% off. I use the mask to cover my full face just so that I can make sure everything's even. It's great. Order in the next three minutes, and you can have the amazing refining mask at no charge. It's a proactive best product, and it's part of Proactive's best offer. I can tell it works. I know it works, and it's definitely my favorite product. Don't just dream of clear, beautiful skin. Make it real. Order Proactive now and get a free upgrade to priority shipping. Call 1-800-211-2155. It just makes you feel so good. Welcome back to the NBA's greatest game. Of course, at center, a 17 year veteran, Sherman Douglas, who started at point guard, and his record is 19 and 8 since coming over at that position as a starter on March 10th, and Dean Brown at the off guard position. Chris Ford, of course, the coach of the Celtics, 156 wins and 92 losses, and two Atlantic Division titles in his pocket, and hoping that tonight is not the season's end. For the Charlotte Hornets, it'll go this way Larry Johnson and Johnny Newman at the 
forward spot to Johnson now with performances of 16, 23, and 29 points in the three games. Newman had 10 points last time out. Alonzo Mourning at the center, Muggsy Bogues, and Kendall Gill in the backcourt. Alan Bristow has orchestrated all of this. A two-on-one record in the playoffs, and you see his 77 and 90 record overall as a coach in his second season. Our Toyota keys to the game, Gill, of course, is in the mind game, really, as far as the Celtics are concerned. You talked about wheels versus wills, and that is, in, in essence, what they have to win tonight. You know the Celtics are going to come out and be much more aggressive, much more physical than they have been in the other games in this series, and Charlotte can't let that deter them from playing the prescribed game plan, get out and run the Celtics. And Alonzo Mourning must be not only a factor, but the equalizer, and to do that, he must remain out of foul trouble. Has to stay on the court, has to bring his offense to bear, and of course, he has to be the policeman on the defensive end to help his teammates out if they are beaten. Well, the bench must be the equalizer tonight. Also, the bench must contribute some points. It helped in games two and games three. It is essential in game four. You can't expect to see possibly an outstanding offensive night like Del Curry had in game three, but you must have his effort, and you've got to get a lot of help from Kenny Gaddison. Our Carolina's Medical Center injury report. Reggie Lewis, of course, out for the postseason and possibly a career. David Wingate will play with a rough and knee. Ed Pinkney has been out since early November. And we are ready to go here at the Charlotte Coliseum. It's the Hornets and the Celtics game four. If the Hornets win, they move on to the Eastern Conference semifinals. If the Celtics win, it's game five Sunday in Boston. And the Hornets get a steal right off the break with Kendall Gill. That's very key. Tim and Douglas will have the basketball in his hands. And now he may be a little bit unnerved and it's going to force D. Brown to handle the ball and take him away from the offense. Randall handles key just lean here midcourt. Here comes D. Brown, and it's taken in this round to get it back. The Hornets with another steal. Johnny Newman. Well, it looks right now as if the wheels are outrunning the wheel. And Boston wants a 20-second timeout. You talk about the turnovers and Muggsy Bogues in the midst of everything as we said he would be. A great... Muggsy says, let me give it back to the guy that created the turnover. And Kendall really highlighted the end of that one. A double in the corner, and Alonzo Mourning smartly taps it ahead to Johnny Newman. He says, let me get in on the dunk action here. What a start for the Charlotte Hornets. Well, if you wanted something to get the Hornets focus in this ball game, you couldn't have picked two better plays than that. The Hornets have yet to go on offense, at least in a set way. Well, you know, that's also is going to get the Boston Celtics a little focused, too. They've got to get this ball up the court, and D. Brown is going to be responsible. I don't think Sherman Douglas is going to be asked to do it much more against Muggsy. Here comes D. Brown, guarded by Kendall Gill at the top. Gamble and Newman will be a key matchup. Here's Parrish, and he gets Boston on the board in a very conventional manner, 4-2. to two. And Boston will probably stay conventional. They'll have to call on Parrish. What you have to ask if you're a Celtic fan is how much in the tank does Robert Parrish have. Can he handle Morning? Can he get him into foul trouble? He succeeded on Saturday, but the Hornets did prevail in double overtime. Seven on the shot clock for Kendall Gill at the top. And he'll take it himself. Yes, thank you, said Kendall. <laughs> He's got four, Hornets 6-2. And the Celtics are very evidently trying to double Alonzo. They were shading towards Alonzo, thinking he'd get the ball. Because of that, the defensive pressure wasn't too tight on a guy like Kendall. He jumped up and made the shot. Way to go. Parrish working on morning. A classic Robert Parrish shot. He's got four. You know, in game two, Gil, the Celtics did a very good job of shutting down Alonzo when it counted in the late stretches of the ball game. And as you pointed out, they are going to the double quickly. The key is can Alonzo get to the line a lot tonight? And also Alonzo realizing that if they try to stop him, become the decoy. No problem. Let him double you. Because in order to double Alonzo morning, somebody else has to be open. If you got a Kendall Gill hitting from the outside, doubling Alonzo is going to be not very smart basketball to play. Mark could open up Larry Johnson's game underneath. Both are trouble for Boston at this point, and Alonzo is on the free throw line. Six to four. Charlotte leading Parrish. Well, you can bet if they're going to double Alonzo Morning down low when Larry Johnson sees the ball, he will see a lot of green. Almost as much green as he's got in his bank account. <laughs> you know, you want to reconsider, that's a lot of green. <laughs> that's a lot of green. <laughs> 
Morning shooting 80% from the free throw line in the playoffs. Actually 81%, 78% for the season. And he connects one out of two to give the Hornets a three-point lead, seven to four. Charlotte, of course, customary fashion, they will show full court pressure after the foul shot. And even more customary now because they realize Boston is a little nervous with the basketball. Abdelnabi doesn't really know what to do with it. Doesn't need to be handling it. D. Brown to Abdelnabi. Faces on Johnson. And Abdelnabi throws it out of bounds. Doesn't need to be handling it. <laughs> well, the double ran at him, and he was looking for D. Brown in a hurry, and it didn't happen. He left his feet a passer. We always talk about that, and this time he throws it to the tough acting to Nacton sign. Here comes Morning. And Morning. As a shooter's touch that Gil talks about so much, the Hornets lead it by 5-9-4. Now, what's key about Alonzo Morning scoring, Steve? If he puts Parrish on the defensive, then Alonzo doesn't have to worry about playing so much defense himself. Here's Brown. Flat out fly and Gamble, who can fill it up. He did it in game two and three. He gets his first entry into the book. It's 9-6, Charlotte by three. Now, in game three, Gamble started quickly and filled it up early, but then you didn't hear from him much more after the second quarter. Here's Morning at the elbow. Planted fire. Abdul Nabi gets the rebound. 9-6, Charlotte in the lead. Three minutes gone in the first. Campbell's open for three. And he ties it. Just like game three, a quick start for Gamble, and then the Hornets tighten up the defense on him a bit. You stop his offense, you really take away a lot of the options from the Celtics. They don't have many other guys to go to. Larry Johnson touches it for the first time in the offensive end. Johnny Newman with the rebound to save the possession. Gill and Morning on the same side of the floor. Here comes Kendall. Back to Alonzo. Travel, rule off the basket as Sherman Douglas positioned himself beautifully in the lane to force the extra step for Alonzo. Well, it was a nice thought. I think uh, Kendall had the idea all along. Alonzo was just a little late in recognizing that Kendall wanted that pick and roll situation. It's obviously there. I would expect those two guys to run it again before the game's over. Sherman Douglas against Muncie Bogues. Pick and roll coming at the top. Hornets defend it well. Here's Aldo Nabi. Had two. The Hornets get the rebound. Score tied at nine. The last touch by Boston. It'll be Charlotte Ball. Had an opportunity for a pick and roll, and Alonzo set the pick, but he never rolled to the basket. Kendall's waiting for him to cut to the basket, and by the time Alonzo made that step, he was a little bit off stride, and therefore the walk. Nine apiece. Score tied. Johnny Newman comes out front. Got a whistle. Brown is going to be charged to D. Brown, trying to hold Kendall Gill. You know, we talked about D's dilemma, Steve, and another dilemma for D. Brown. He's asked to be an offensive player, and he's got to run around and chase a rejuvenated Kendall Gill, rejuvenated for about a month and a half now, but certainly in the playoffs, uh, averaging over 20 games, so D. Brown's got his hands full. At 30 points in game one, 18 points game two, 12 in game three. It saw his minutes down because of the margin. Harris can't contain the rebound. Now, you see what happens when Charlotte can get in its running game because of fellow forcing turnovers. They were 4-4 four and four to start the game. Because of getting into the set offense, they haven't had a chance to get the looks at the basket that they want. They're 0-3 once they've gotten into the set. Score still tied at 9 like we've been stuck there for the last two minutes as the ball is dried off by Daryl Garrettson. Working the game with Bob Delaney and Dan Crawford tonight. And Charlotte will have it with a fresh shot clock. Here's Kendall in the corner. You mentioned Larry not only taking the wooden shot, but the jumper. You got to go inside to him and get him started early down low. Johnson bumped out of the lane by Abdelnabi, just fades away and plants one. 11-9, Hornets by two. You don't have a defender in Ala Abdelnabi that can by himself stop Larry Johnson. If you go to Larry early and often enough, you'll see how the Celtics will have to make a defensive adjustment. Abdelnabi's defense on Johnson's going to have to happen long before he gets the ball. Campbell to Douglas in traffic. And the foul. No, it's a jump ball. No, it's a foul on Alonzo Morning. It's going to be his first. At the Gatorade Sports Science Institute, we test athletes in the lab. Because we
we know they'll be tested on the field. Gatorade, the most tested sports drink on the planet. What if you could learn shooting from perhaps the best shooter in basketball history? Now you can. Better Basketball, home of the world's best improvement videos, brings you the ultimate in shot instruction. An all-new three-hour DVD, Better Shooting 2. And as a bonus, you'll learn the shooting secrets of J.J. Redick. The video will build your entire shot, from footwork up to the finishing stroke. Buy Better Shooting and the entire Better Basketball DVD series today and start improving tomorrow. Call 1-800-BETTER-B or visit betterbasketball.com. Beginning August 22nd, 10 international teams will compete in Las Vegas for the right to play in Beijing in 2008. The FIBA Americas Championship 2007 will include some of the world's best basketball players from the Americas. The competition will be intense, so get your tickets now. Represent your country and cheer on your team. For ticket information, call 1-866-388-3267 or go to FIBAAmericas.com. FIBA Americas Championship 2007. 2.8 tenths of a second. We're tied at 100. Game six on the line here. Russell to Stockton. Stock for three. Stock. Got it. Unbelievable. John Stockton. John Stockton. It's over. The Jazz win it. We're on the way to the World Championship. Got a great look at it. They ran a stack out of it. He went inside, stepped back out in the shot. He had plenty of time to catch a good look, made one heck of a shot. and an uncertain gamble all of a sudden flashed in. At first it was Sherman Douglas, and then uh, Gamble was there, and that presented a little bigger target for Hunter the Dumble. Hornets by two. Abdel Nabi, shot blocked by Morning. Stolen by Douglas, and a foul coming up on Muggsy Bowles. 14 foul on Charlotte. The Celtics love the pick and roll, and this time they execute with Ala Abdul Nabi, but he can't finish Alonzo Mourning doing the police work down underneath. And the Hornets start the fast break, but can't get it going. Douglas, run up against Bogues again as we hit the six minute mark here in the first. Goes to the basket on Mourning. There's the block, but there's Parrish with the finish. Well, that's a tough situation. Alonzo blocks the shot on the guard. Means he has to leave the center to do it. Muggsy would have had to block out of Robert Parrish. And that's a little bit too much to ask of Muggs. Score tied at 11. Second tie of the ball game. Kendall works the baseline. Good defense by Boston. Eight on the shot clock. Morning. Here's Johnny. Hornets with a fresh 24. The basket counts. Alonzo Mourning for two. Foul is on Parrish. That's just exceptional hard work inside. Johnny Newman, we know he likes to fake the jumper and go right to the basket. Parrish does a good job of getting the block. Larry Johnson sees and gets it inside to Alonzo, who's ready for the jump hook. That's a nice play. Good work inside by the Hornets. Morning now with five. Here you see what he's done so far in the playoffs. 3.3 blocks, a little under his season average. At one point, second in the league, finished the season fourth in the league in block shots. Had six for the night, and the Hornets lead is three. It's very important what's happening in the career of Alonzo Morning first year. You're going to have a rookie that's going to have playoff experience, so he's going to be key for a long time with the Hornets and very experienced at that. And the only one of the top five picks, including Mr. O'Neal. Third steal of the game for the Hornets. Muggsy will get a bunny. That's an outstanding play again. You talk about the wheels of the Hornets. Those wheels can roll once the turnovers are forced by the defense. 16-11, Hornets by five, and the hive is starting to lock. Here's Douglas, and there's a foul on Alonzo Mourning, and that's going to be two. And both fouls created by Sherman Douglas getting into the lane, penetrating down the lane. We talked about in game one, the one thing to do about Sherman Douglas was keep him out of the lane. He's not a great shooter, Steve. He doesn't look to shoot, but if 
you allow him to penetrate, he becomes a little bit dangerous. There's the man who was the factor in game two, and what a game he played. Kevin McHale in his 13th and final season, and he hopes that tonight is not his final game. He'd like to end his career at Boston Garden somehow. Kenny Gaddison on the floor now for Charlotte in place of Alonzo Mourning with two fouls. We knew Kenny would be key. I don't think we expected it to be key due to foul situations so early for Alonzo. Douglas, by the way, is a 56% free throw shooter in the <laughs> which, regular season. Which attests to the fact that you should let him shoot his jump shot. <laughs> he can't stand still and shoot for 56%. What is he going to do in movement? <laughs> Good question. Douglas with his first point of the night. 16-12. Hornets by four. 4.55 left to play here in the first. Hornets into their weave. Kendall Gill chased by D. Brown. Bags two. Well, the, the pick and roll with Kenny was there, and, and D. Brown's defense just was a little lax. It's been lax on a couple of the jump shots by Kendall Hill. Kendall needs to keep taking it if they're not going to play any tighter. Hornets on a 7-1 run that has them up by six. McHale's shot is short. Very well defended by Gaddison in the lane, and Gaddison's minutes are going to be key, as you said, Gil. Here's Johnson. Now, you got to wonder if McHale's back is going to problem, be a problem for him in this game. He went to the dressing room in game uh, three with back spasms. Larry Johnson from outside. Gamble with the rebound now for Boston. Larry wants to establish that mid-range jump shot, and I understand. I'd like to see him establish his, uh, his house down in the lane. That's where people really have a tough time. Travel violation on Robert Parrish as he waited for Dee Brown to get to the corner. But Parrish holding the ball in one hand, and as you say, waiting for Dee to make a move, did a little two-step, and uh, in the NBA, you only get a one-step. Celtics are one for six from the floor after a four-for-four four start. The Hornets leading by six. Gill down through the lane. Loses the handle, now picks it back up. Here comes Johnson, stripped of it by Gamble and Douglas. That's nice defense. You got to give those guys credit. Good defense. Kale and Brown. Here's Brown on the baseline. He can get up. And so can Parrish to tip it in for his eighth point of the night. Parrish having an exceptional playoff run. 15, 19, and 10 points in the three games. Kendall Gill lost one up high in anticipation of the block. <laughs> Kendall. Kendall gave up on that a little bit. He tried to just flip it over Parrish's hands. Probably should have dunked it. And D. Brown comes up with the score. And the Celtics pulled it within two, 18-16. And it hasn't been quite as physical as I thought it would be. It's still a pretty quick pace the ball game, which I think will be to the advantage of the Charlotte Hornets. Larry Johnson. Seven on the shot clock for Johnson. Goaltending. Goaltending the call, the Hornets have a four-point lead as Larry Johnson gets his fourth point of the night. Larry a little quick for Kevin McHale and a nice drive to the baseline. And we were talking about Larry trying to establish that short-range jump shot. He abstained from taking it that time and just went right to the basket. Johnny Newman. Checks it out of Kevin Gamble's hands, and it's going to go out of bounds. We're going to get a timeout, though, called by Boston. With 2.44 left to play here in the first at the Hive, the Hornets lead the Celtics by four. People are smart, and when it comes to home loans, they don't like smoke and mirrors. Well, unless they're a magician or an illusionist, which is just a fancy word for magician. What they do like is getting what they're promised, like our smart rate. It's a 30-year fixed mortgage with a rate around 6 and 1 8 percent. To find out more, call us at 1-800-DITEC-1 and let us help you get the loan you need without being sawed in half. DITEC. People are smart. Hi, I'm Magic Johnson. Welcome to the Fundamentals of Basketball. To be the best, you have to learn from the best. That's why basketball legend Magic Johnson has assembled the greatest team of all-star players and coaches to help players everywhere improve their skills and knowledge of the sport. The Magic Fundamentals comprehensive video is filled with everything you need to know to increase your points, assists, rebounds, and understanding of the game of basketball. We all are looking to get better, and this tape will make you better if you practice the drills over and over again. You don't have to go to camp. I'm bringing camp right to you. Take the first step to becoming a great basketball player with Magic Fundamentals on two DVDs. 
Order now and get Magic's Conditioning DVD free. That's over two hours of basketball instruction plus the Conditioning DVD for two payments of only $19.99. And when you call, ask how you can own Magic's Fundamentals for Kids and Advanced DVD programs. Call the number on your screen now or order online at magicjohnsondvd.com. Rush delivery available. Austin with the ball and Del Curry, the sharpshooters on the floor. Matched up with Kevin Gamble. Here comes Brown in the center of the floor. Ball is tipped by McHale and he can't make it work. Johnson with the rebound. Bones to Johnson for two. Well, the Hornets take every opportunity to get out and run. McHale never could get up off the floor and get back, so it was a 5-on-4 situation, and Charlotte took advantage. Charlotte by six once again. Brown on the bottom, looking for McHale. The help comes from Curry. McHale finally gets it done. His first basket of the night, 22 to 18. Two minutes left. Here's Gaddison. Gaddison trapped. Comes out of there, and the jump ball is going to be called. They say Brown and Gaddison both touched it on the end line. Muggsy Bowes can really give the ball to people. Look at that behind the back pass to Larry Johnson. You have to be happy if you're a big guy playing on the same team with Muggsy Bowes. Here comes Sidney Green into the lineup for the first time, and that will move Muggsy Bowes out. Now, I want to go big. That last play to Mikhail showed how it's very difficult to have a weak side defender the size of Adele Curry come over and give adequate defensive help when the lob is placed. But now, when you have Gaddison and Sidney Green, any lobs can be defended against a lot more effectively. Xavier McDaniel is into the ball game for Boston. You got a whistle? Quick tip, I believe, by the Celtics. Tried to steal one that time, didn't they? Yep. And it looks like it's going to be Boston Charlotte ball because of the jump circle violation by Xavier McDaniel. Oh, yes. Now, Xavier McDaniels has to come in and play some effective basketball, not just brutish or bully basketball, but expect Xavier to come in trash talking and trying to get everybody flustered, and he may not be an advantage to his team if he does that. Well, he uh, talked to the Boston Globe yesterday and said some of his family and friends from nearby Columbia, South Carolina, worried that he wasn't playing the same game. Takes advantage of him inside. Well, he wasn't playing Larry Johnson, and that's who he's matched up against. And his head turned, and Larry smartly goes back door and gets the dunk. 24 18, Charlotte by eight. Let's see how these two mix it up. McDaniel. That's a good sign for McDaniel. He has shot a woeful 35% of the series. I think it's a good sign for Charlotte that he starts his offense on the outside. I don't mind giving up the jump shots. That's what you want to get. Inside to Gaddison, and what an assist. You know, Dell had 27 points, but you also have to talk about his six rebounds, his five assists, and his three steals. All around, great game for Dell Curry. I guess the best basketball game I've seen him play as a Hornet. 26-20. Parrish, Green with the rebound. And Sidney has garnered a rebound each time he's played in this playoff series. Here's Kendall. Fade away. Whoops! Plus a foul. You talk about a guy stepping up in the playoffs, lifting his game to another level. Well, that guy certainly is Kendall Gill. Eight points for KG. Kendall, under control, uses that screen, gets the jump shot off, it hits on the elbow. Says, no matter, I'll make it anyway. Kendall on the line. Gill averaged 62% from the floor the last five games of the season. All wins of the regular season by the Hornets. He has nine here tonight, and the Hornets out to their biggest lead now, 29-20, with 49 seconds left to play in the first quarter. And, and as they get to that lead, the Celtics have to slow it down to make sure they get a good shot, and slowing it down helps the Hornets to keep the lead. McHale leaves one off the side. Green with his second rebound. Here comes Gill back the other way. And you see the size of Sidney Green pays off. And no Gill. Well, who steps into the zone tonight? I think we found one candidate. Listen to the crowd. Curry with a near steal. Celtics are really standing around, not picking and rolling, and not getting a good shot. Gamble silences the crowd with a three, his second tray of the night. He has eight, 31-23, Hornets in the lead with six seconds to play. Charlotte on a 9-4 run. Here is Green. And that'll end the first quarter of play, but a good one for Charlotte. 31-23 after one in game four. Now get big arms, a ripped chest, 
cut abs with the perfect push-up. The perfect push-up works with the natural rotation of your arms and shoulders to maximize results and minimize stress on your body. With the perfect push-up, your hands, arms, and shoulders rotate 90 degrees just like in a punch. All the energy of the push-up is captured and transmitted right where you want it to the muscles. There's no wasted effort, just muscle building movement. And as your arms rotate, you feel it work in your biceps, your triceps, your chest and abs, and your shoulders. Invented by a U.S. Navy SEAL and made with steel and a ball-bearing movement, it's the push-up perfected. So here's the deal. The perfect push-up is only two payments of $19.95. When you order, you'll receive two perfect push-up rotational handles, and you'll also receive the Navy SEAL-inspired perfect push-up workout chart. You'll be ripped in no time. Get big fast. Call right now for the perfect push-up. To the NBA's greatest game. Larry Johnson takes one inside from Kenny Gaddison. That's two of his eight points. The Hornets here leading by eight are Bojangles hustle stats, led by Charlotte, 14 to 9 on the strength of three block shots and also a two rebound edge. The steals are even, but I think Charlotte's got one that the official scorer hasn't counted yet. And what Charlotte does with the steals, I think it's as important as the steals themselves because of the speed factor and the youth factor getting down the court so quickly on the Hornets, every steal becomes a score for them. Alonzo Morning has two of the three Charlotte blocks. Steve Martin, Gil McGregor at the Charlotte Coliseum. It's Kenny Gaddison with Del Curry. Curry's first shot from the floor. And oh, well. He points to the crowd. Now, now, I'll tell you, if he is still in that zone that he was in uh, a night ago, two nights ago, the Celtics are in some deep trouble. Hornets by 10. Abdul now be back on the floor working over Gaddison. Leaves it short. Gaddison can't get the rebound. And Gaddison, I think he's saying that Abdul Nabi pulled his arm after the miss. Holla got away with one. Inbounds to Gamble. Gamble, free pass. Gamble leads the Celtics now with 10 points. He's a guy that you have to stop. He can have a big night, although he hasn't had any lately. Shot by Curry goes in, but I think there's a foul beforehand. And the foul is going to be charged possibly to Dee Brown. That's going to be his second. Dee Brown matched up actually against Tony Bennett, but trying to switch off and help on Dale Curry. I'm sure the Celtics remember what Dale Curry did to them, and they're very conscious of not letting Dale get started. So you'll see a lot of help being uh, given against Dale Curry. Curry gets it back out. Here's Johnson, a minute gone here in the second. Still plenty of time in this possession. Bennett working the baseline with Sidney Green. Gaddison over the top. And we've got an over-the-top rebounding loose ball foul charge to Gaddison. That's his first team first. That wasn't the strongest of shots taken by Sid Green. He tried to shoot his jump hook and it put Gaddison in a position where he had to go over to the top to rebound. You want the ball inside to Sydney, you want Sydney to take it right to the basket. You have to force people to foul you in playoff action, Steve. You don't want to take a shot that hits nothing and you not get hit. Every time you get an offensive opportunity, particularly close to the basket, you have to get either a score or you have to get fouled. David Wingate in the game for Larry Johnson. He'll be matched up defensively with McDaniel. Here's Abdul Nabi now with Gaddison. Whistle, travel. It was that skip that you talked about earlier. Same move. Olive got away with it the first time. The ref saw it this time. He bumps you with his body prior to trying to make his offensive move and thereby moving both feet. You saw that's Boston's sixth turnover. I'm glad you remember that, Steve. I try to listen to everything you say. <laughs> everything. Still waiting for a stock to <laughs> Gaddison. Yeah. Like use of the glass by the Gat Man. He's got four, 35, 25. He had a very good line of game three with nine points. Outstanding line, four rebounds. He had five assists, which is a little uh, unusual for him. He brown at the top, Hornets by 10. McHale and Green battle. Hornets get the rebound, David Wingate. Green is doing a great job of using his body against Kevin McHale. The Celtics have not been able to call on McHale. Give and go to Gaddison. Respect garnered by Del Curry's shot set that play up. And no doubt. Five is alive. 9.54 left to go in the first half. The Hornets lengthen their lead to 12. Abdel Nabi gets behind Gaddison and gets his first basket of the night. 
McKinney was caught in a limbo. He didn't know whether to try to reach around in front or try to stay behind. And you have to make up your mind defensively down low to be in one position or the other. And since he wasn't in either, it was easy for Abdullah to get the pass. Folks trying to organize his pick and roll with Gaddis. Now uses it as a screen. Hurry with the rebound. Abdullah with the rebound for Boston. Fox in the open floor. Heel star who closed the season quickly with 59% shooting over the last 20 misses. Well, that wasn't a good decision. He had no rebounders. He just shot the ball before his teammates got back. Wingate on the perimeter. But nobody's looking for the offense down low for Charlotte either. Sidney Green finds a cutter and a foul coming up on Rick Fox. So Rick Fox with a foul and timeout on the court. The timeout charged to Charlotte with 6.15 left to go in the first half. The Hornets lead the Celtics by 10. My closet was a jungle, or at least it felt that way to me. It was cluttered, overstuffed, just plain disorganized. But I've given my closet a total makeover by using space bag storage packs. I've tripled my closet space, and now you can too. Just place your items into the space bag storage pack, seal the airtight zipper, then vacuum out the air. Look how my things stay compressed and protected. Space bag storage packs are airtight, waterproof, and guaranteed to lock out dirt, bugs, and moisture. Now you can store them in the garage or basement, in the attic, or under the bed. But no matter where you store them, everything comes right back to life. As fresh and dry as the day you put it in. Plus, they're reusable, so you can use them over and over and over again. Use the extra large bag to store bulky items and the large size to store up to 12 sweaters. There's even a medium-sized bag designed to fit drawers and closet shelves. And use our new vacuum seal hanging bag to store up to 10 suits or dresses. You can find space bag products at 15,000 retail stores nationwide, but you can only get this special offer on TV. Call now and we'll send you one extra large, one large, one medium, plus the new hanging bag for just $19.95. But it gets even better. Call now and you'll get this full-length hanging bag to store longer dresses and coats, a $13 value, absolutely free. But that's not all. You'll also get two roll-up travel bags so you can pack up to twice as much, a $10 value. That's free too. Altogether, that's seven bags. A $50 value for just $19.95. Plus, it comes with Space Bag's unconditional money back guarantee. Think small, think safe, think Space Bag. Call to find out how you can get a total of seven Space Bags, a $50 value for just $19.95. This special TV offer is not available at any stores. Call 1 800 477 9654. Call now. To the NBA's greatest game. Uh, this is a good time for Charlotte to make a very serious statement of fact to the Boston Celtics. Both of their guards are in trouble on the bench, so the ball handling has to be a bit suspect. You just put the pressure on these Celtics and try to keep this lead at double figures even into halftime. Harry Johnson and Alonzo Mourning back on the floor. Parrish returns for Boston. Charlotte leading by 10. Morning from the outside. Johnson boards it and hits it. LJ with 10 on the game, and the Hornets lead by 12. Want to go to him, LJ, a couple of times down. Give him an opportunity to draw the defensive pressure from Boston so that he can pass off. The Hornets are moving so well when they are without the basketball. Here's Xavier McDaniel. He's hit both of his offerings here tonight. So far, 44-34 the score. Charlotte. He's going to have to put more shots up if Boston's going to count on his offense. He can't just come out and take two shots. Now Curry, heavily guarded by McDaniel. We'll watch that off the ball. McDaniel is really getting physical with that. Uh, he's going to try to rub Dell up, no doubt. That's what he's going to try to do. I'm sure he'll be called for a foul soon. Dell at the shot clock. McDaniel runs the floor. Muggsy Bogues. Watch it away, but McDaniel prevails, and he's got six. Good defense almost by Charlotte. Muggsy right there again in the midst of everything. Oh, wow. Larry Johnson leveled Xavier McDaniel, and now Moore may break out. Well, I, I predicted this was going to be a tough game, and uh, Xavier McDaniel's right in the midst of it. McDaniel gave Curry a hard shot off a screen. Johnson saw it. 
and he said no more. And he leveled McDaniel. Trying to protect his teammate, but he's got to stay in the ball game himself. Now, McDaniels bumps Curry, and Johnson clears McDaniels out. And Rick Fox, in trying to plead the case a little too vehemently, gets hit with the tech. And we have, I think, technicals at both ends. There'll be a technical on Larry Johnson, an offensive foul on Larry Johnson for the screen, and a technical on Rick Fox at the other end. First, the chuck comes right on Dale Curry, and Larry trying to protect his teammate. Maybe he didn't hit Xavier quite that hard. I think Xavier sort of gave him a little bit of flop for emphasis. And McDaniel heads to the sidelines to pick up a towel. And Larry Johnson is getting the fans in the ball game. And, you know, we talked about it early on in game three, what these fans mean to the Charlotte Hornets. And I think that crowd on uh, Monday night had a real big impact on the game's outcome. And now they are involved again. Trying to distract with Daniel at the foul line. And the sixth man did the job. to Larry and also Rick Fox. And what you have to be very careful about, you know, your second technical is an ejection. That's so right. you have to be very careful there. It's going to be the second half. Don't forget you got one tech in the first half. And McDaniel doesn't have a technical. Charlotte by 8, 44-36. McDaniel, ball pushed away by Muggsy Ball. Muggsy and Kendall doing the double team D on McDaniel. Good play by Kendall. He gets the block. Here's Douglas. In the lane, two on the shot clock. Nice tip by Rick Fox. I think that was blocked also by Kendall. And Rick Fox, very opportunistic with that tip in. Celtics now pulled it within six. Here's Johnson. And now Abdenabi tries to get physical with him. Six-nothing run for Boston pending this foul shot. Johnson, but apparently Boston has decided to make this thing physical. We knew it would happen, I think, and we thought it would happen a little bit earlier, but what's going on? Larry Johnson's getting the basketball going right to the baseline. Makes it very difficult to double team and help out. He took Parrish baseline because, I mean, Mikhail baseline, Mikhail doesn't have the quickness, and Ala Abdul Nabi demonstrated just then he doesn't have the quickness to keep up with Larry Johnson either. Johnson with 11, on its lead by 7, 45-38, but a key stretch of the ball game here for Charlotte. Del Curry comes out. And David Wingate goes in. Second shot is good. And I will not you need to watch him. He had some uh, extra pushing on Alonzo Mourning just then on that made foul shot. He pushed him all the way to Pine. <laughs> Hip check delivered by Parrish. The Celtics, so the, I guess the Bruins are out of the playoffs, so the Celtics <laughs> decided to take over. I talked to uh, one of the Hornet coaches about the possibility of more physical play, and he says we're used to it. We did it against New York. It's not going to affect our team at all, and obviously it hasn't. The foul is going to be on Parrish, and that's number two. And Alonzo Mourning going to the free throw line with 4.05 left to go here in the first half. The Hornets leading 46 to 38. Morning hasn't had an awful lot of minutes so far. Hasn't needed them yet. And, of course, got two fouls early. So hits the first. Get in line for those hard-to-get Hornet season tickets. Join the Hornet hopefuls and get discounts on single-game tickets before they go on public sale. A small deposit puts you in line for the hottest ticket in town. 
and you see the number to call for more information. Wonder will the Hornets put that pressure on after the made foul shot if it's made by Alonzo because again the ball handlers are dwindling ever so much for the Celtics. Morning for two. He's got eight. Hornets lead it 48-38 back up to 10. Here's the pressure. Rick Fox to bring it up. We thought that might happen. A small forward having to bring up the ball. That means he can't be involved in the offense. Douglas comes and gets it. 10 on the shot clock. Nice cut by Douglas. Nice block by Morton. McDaniel in the lane, batted away. Going right to Larry Johnson. Kendall Gill. The ball handling again. Hurting the Celtics. They don't have the passers. They don't have the dribblers. And Charlotte's making them pay. 6-0. The Hornets answer the physical fisticuffs of Boston with a 6-0. It's going to be an 8-0 run. And a foul by Sherman Douglas. And Kendall thought Sherman was a little excessive. And now he's a little upset. Sherman actually, I think, made a pretty good play. Bristow going down to talk to Kendall Gill. I think Kendall wants a flagrant foul called on Douglas. Kendall has a clear breakaway, and Douglas, yes, he does. Gets Kendall right in the back with his left hand and then swings. It should be a flagrant. It should be called a flagrant. And it's going to be called that way. They must be consistent. If they're going to call that offensive foul on Larry Johnson, they've got to be consistent and not let Sherman Douglas get away with a flagrant foul. You can't get your chest to the back of the offensive player on a fast break if you have no defender on your team in front of that player. It's almost like a call in hockey, Steve, and that's what happened. Douglas had his chest to Kendall's back when there were only two players, nobody in between the basket. You can't do that. You see it here. There's Douglas's chest right in Kendall's back. Flavin foul, right call. Gill to the line. Well, we haven't sent any Celtics to the penalty box, but they're making big score. 14 points for Kendall Gill, 51-38. And we have a timeout coming up, or is that a technical? No, you got Chris Ford trying to get a timeout. All right, timeout on the court with... 319 left to play. Chris Ford doesn't like what's happening. His club falling behind by 13. Proactive Solution has good news if you have a difficult pimple or sudden breakout and can't find relief. Because when you order now, you'll get the exclusive refining mask free with your three-piece kit. Just a dab, and the mask is designed to zap problems. It's fast. It's dramatic. I put it on in the evening before I go to bed, and when I wake up in the morning, you don't have acne. That's a good feeling. It works the fastest. It's potent. It's like my little skincare army. Call now and order the amazing proactive solution to heal your acne and help prevent future breakouts. You'll save 50% on Proactive when you order in the next four minutes, just $19.95. For on-the-spot pimple control, I use the refining mask. Just a little dab, that's all you need. It's a Proactive Best product, and it's part of Proactive's best offer. Don't just dream of clear, beautiful skin, make it real. Order Proactive now and get a free upgrade to priority shipping. Call 1-800-357-4809. Homeowners, want to refinance and get cash? Countrywide has a great reason to do it now, a no-cost refi. It has no points, no credit reporting fee, no processing fee, no document fee, and no third-party fees. No title or escrow fees. Absolutely no closing costs. So you wind up with a lot more cash. Call now and ask for a no-cost refi. We're America's number one home loan lender, and no one can do what Countrywide can. Call 1-800-641-0781. 51-38, Charlotte will get the ball. After the two shots off the flagrant foul, you see the points off turnovers. The Hornets again working their way up into big numbers tonight. That's an outstanding, outstanding stat. It shows that the Hornet defense is where it needs to be. We talk about how the Hornets score, but defense generates offense, and Charlotte has the speed to really take advantage of good offense once they play the good deal. Flagrant foul obviously means two shots plus possession. with 14, Charlotte by 15. Get it low to Larry. Boston has not 
proven with any one player that they can stop it. Sherman Douglas back to the offense. Looks at McDaniel. He's got it by Gill. It's a very stagnant offense by Boston, Steve. No pick and roll. Not a lot of definite moves. That ball goes in to Xavier, who picks up the foul. But Boston's very slow in getting into any offensive movement. Hornets commit their 14 foul. So no more to give before the penalty. Charlotte already in the game. First half, Charlotte by 15. Sherman's not even looking to play off. He's looking to give the ball away. It's Fox. McHale has a little trouble. 10 on the shot clock. Harris boards the miss. And makes the basket. Harris with 10. 53-40. Hornets by 13. Charlotte's got good ball movement. Look at the spacing. The Hornets have enough spacing now that anybody with the ball can make an offensive move. Alonzo Morning. 10 for Zoe. 55-40 Charlotte. Robert Parrish refused to challenge Alonzo on the jump shot, and Alonzo will make him want to challenge him the next time. Daniel with it. McHale double-teamed by Wingate. Doing a good job on the post. Rick Fox with a jump shot. Alonzo Morning with a rebound. Here comes Larry. Steal by McDaniel on the turnover. Johnson with a block. Uh, two great plays by two great players. Now you have guys trying to prove a point. Larry proved his by getting the block, but uh, Xavier said, well, I'll prove mine by getting the ball back to Duncan. He stayed with it. Got it for two, 55-42. Clearly a Charlotte pace leaves 55 points. Seven seconds on the shot clock for Gill and Johnson. Larry from the outside. Larry Johnson making that jump shot. If he starts making that medium range jump shot, the Celtics are really going to be in the world of hurt because now he won't even know how to try to stop Larry. 57-42, Charlotte, McHale. Nice basket by Kevin McHale. He's got four. No, we may not see many more of those. It might be it for him. So Celtics lose. That is it. He's calling it career. Of course, if there's a game five, it goes back to Boston. Del Curry getting set to check back in. Coming out. It's going to be David Wingate. Well, Charlotte obviously wants to try to get Dale involved in the last couple of times they have to play offense, and I'm sure the Celtics want to try to make sure Dale doesn't get on that three-point arc and put one up. We talk about the power trio for the Hornets. Larry, Kendall, and Zoe, they've combined for 40 of Charlotte's 55 points. Bogues gets into no man's land and gets the tip. <laughs> The fans love it. They're standing at the hive as the Hornets walk the clock down with a 13-point lead. Pick and roll with Zoe. Muggsy. <laughs> 59-44, Charlotte. Now, Schumann Douglas isn't going to look to play offense, just want to give it up. McHale in traffic. Over the outstretched arms of Alonzo Morning. McHale with six. Hornets got a little over and back that time, Steve. And that's the end of the first half of play. Don't worry about those guys. I am just so sick of this. Dude, what do you expect? You went with Geico.com. What, to save some money? It's my life, okay? Just a little loyalty would be nice, that's all. What? Having Geico makes me less of a caveman? Tina's here, we're getting back together. Hey, give us a minute. Geico.com. So easy a caveman can do it. Shooting. The most important skill in basketball. No player has mastered the shot like J.J. Redick, and no one has ever made instructional videos like Better Basketball. What happens when these two unite? The ultimate way to improve your shot. Better Basketball's all-new DVD, Better Shooting 2. 
with over three hours of hardcore techniques. This video will give you all the tools for a high percentage shot with no wasted motion. It even includes a unique training regimen to build perfect form and chart your improvement. The DVD was written by player development guru Rick Torbett, a coach who had three straight teams shoot an inconceivable 40% from three-point range, proving better basketball's methods work for all players in real games. And Better Basketball has six other DVDs for player development. Better one-on-one -on -one offense, one-on-one -on -one defense, ball handling, passing, post play, and scoring without the ball. If you buy the whole set of seven, you get one free. To order the Better Basketball DVDs, call 1-800-BETTER-B or learn more and order at betterbasketball.com. to the NBA's greatest game. First few minutes here in the third, very, very important. Most important of the season for Boston. You want to see Johnny Newman get a little bit more involved in the offense. He hasn't been, been really quiet tonight. E. Brown couldn't save it in time. It's going to be Charlotte Ball with seven on the shot clock. In fact, Johnny Newman's only taken two shots in the first half and made them one. So, you know, the Hornets had counted on his offense in the playoffs. They didn't need it in game three. They haven't needed it to this point, but it would be great to see Johnny get a little involved in the offense early here in the third quarter. Darrell Garrison and Bob Delaney are talking about how much time remains on the 24-second shot clock. I think they're going to take it down one more second down to six, are they? No, nope. going to stay at seven. Johnson off the inbounds pass. Douglas towards the miss. Douglas is rebounding. Pretty strong. Seven rebounds for the guard on average. Including nine on opening night. But he won't shoot it. <laughs> Douglas gets inside. Seven on the shot clock. Parrish will shoot. Johnny Newman with a big board. Strong rebound by Johnny. Telegraph that pass, though. And he's looking for warning. Here's Johnson. He's decided to take his game outside. He's got 20. Well, Abdul Nabi refuses to get close on Larry because he's afraid Larry's going to go around him. And Larry's smart enough to take advantage of it. D. Brown delivers the ball right to Abdul Nabi, but he doesn't see it. Here comes Moves. Muggsy inside, blocked by Parrish, taken by Gamble. He's a little adventurous on the part of Muggsy. Herman Douglas, trying to work over morning. Came down on the floor before he got rid of it. The ultimate respect. Homage being paid to Alonzo Morning by Sherman Douglas. I catch it, I jump in there, I'll keep it so I don't get to eat it. 15-point <laughs> lead for Charlotte, and they have the ball. Two minutes gone in the third. Shot doesn't get it. Johnny Newman can't get the rebound. Xavier McDaniel is going to check in here at first blush. He's going to try to get uh, some more enthusiasm into the Celtic uh, lineup. Hasn't been a very strong wheel to Boston Celtic team. I think it's a team that's a bit split, Steve. going to be an illegal against Charlotte. I think they're calling him Muggsy, too. Yep, Muggsy pleads his case. And Daniel's back on, having a better night tonight than in games two and three. And, of course, he had a great night in game one. That's the second illegal defense call against Charlotte. Brings about the technical foul. And trying to anticipate where the ball is going to go. Sometimes you find yourself guarding a person who's not going to receive the pass. And if you have two men guarding a guy without the basketball, that's a leap. Austin trailing Charlotte by 14. Douglas with the ball out front. Gamble has it. Newman trying to keep close. Nice pass to Parrish. May have twisted an ankle. Eight on the shot clock. Good D by Charlotte. Just good defense, Steve. McDaniel. Holmes with the rebound. Morning. The recognition between Alonzo and Muzzy growing very quickly. They look at each other, make eye contact. Muzzy throws the lob. Alonzo makes the catch. 65-49. Hornets here by 16.
16. D. Brown. McDaniel with an eight on the shot clock. Parrish gets a dunk. Parrish now with 12. That's a nice play by Xavier. He drives through the basket, knowing that Alonzo's going to pick him up. He knows Alonzo's not going to just let him come in there. Therefore, he can drop it off to Parrish. Johnny Newman trying to get his game point. Takes the shot from outside over Gamble, and that might be the trick. Well, it was a nice pick set by Larry Johnson to get that shot for Johnny Newman. 67-51. Hornets lengthen their lead here to 16. Daniel on Johnson. Hornets come to double. Daniel can't find Douglas. Now does. Morning found him too. <laughs> Douglas with a brave putback. Whistle and a foul coming up against Sean. Who's this one on? It's going to be on Johnson. And Larry walks about half court with a big smile on his face. I guess he feels, yeah, it's true. I just got caught. And that's going to be three on LJ which is the worst scenario that he's got his third foul, but the Hornets had a fast break going because it was a nice rebound by Alonzo Morning. Now, this is the play. You see the shot, and Larry, out of the pitcher, must have pushed right there in the back of Sherman. And that's Sherman flopping again. Sherman needs to be somewhere in Hollywood because does he exaggerate every time he's touched? Sherman has a ways to go to catch Denzel Washington. A ways to go. A ways to go. A ways to go. <laughs> I guess he's not the guy they named those tank after, huh? <laughs> 67-51. Johnson now has three. And John Johnson and McDaniel still pushing the line. Now, that that's something you might want to watch to see who gets called quickest for the next foul. And they're both matched up now. Newman to the top. Newman. Well, we talked about his offense coming to play here in the third quarter, and it has. 16-9 to 52. The Hornets here by 17. Lead growing steadily. Parrish guarded by Morning. Left that one short. Douglas. Parrish jams it home. 14 for the Chiefs. 69-54. Morning gets it right back and gets fouled by Xavier McDaniel. That's what a winning team can do. You give up a basket and you come right back down before the other team gets a chance, not only to celebrate the basket, but before they get a chance to set up defensively. Nice push in by Muggsy Bow. After the foul, McDaniel looked to see if Morning was going to glower at him, and Alonzo was too busy picking up the ball for the official, just look away. Don't have time for it, X. I've got to go to the foul line. That's right. I've got to go score some more. Is up there. This is the first. <laughs> and there's a meeting at the foul line, and I guess Muggsy and Larry were coming to talk to Zoe. He wasn't there. He's back at half court. He's he's back here. So we came to talk to you, man. <laughs> I was coming to talk to you. Don't leave. <laughs> Zoe has a ritual before he takes every shot. And you underline rich in that. You know, it sounds like it. Yes. to the forehead. Collects himself for two. On a pressure. One out of two anyway. 70 to 54. A little bit of pressure on Douglas. Daniel Ball handles in the open floor and Bowles makes the steal. Deja vu. Here's Newman. Touch pass to Johnson thrown away. Well, you, you don't mind that kind of turnover, although you don't like it, but you're going towards the basket, so the Hornets still doing a good job of disrupting all the passing lanes. Douglas out top and the hive starts to walk. Brown, nice pass to the post to McDaniel. Block by morning. <laughs> you gotta do something else if you're gonna get it on Alonzo. Alonzo!
the All-Star game eight times. When I was league MVP, twice. You were fooled. Because you believe that was about me. While I believe it takes five. But you're not a fool, are you? The buzz is back, New Orleans. Hornets basketball 2007-2008 season tickets are now on sale. The Hornets are turning this into an all-star event. The first 500 fans to buy a new season ticket plan will be guaranteed the opportunity to purchase two tickets to a 2008 NBA all-star event. You can also be in the arena for the rookie challenge, skills competition, or the greatest thrill on earth, the NBA all-star game. Join today. Call 504-525-HOOP or visit Hornets.com because with Hornets basketball, you got to believe. The game is tied at 79. Game one will be decided right here. Wade puts it up. It's yes. good. Yeah, baby. Game throw. Yes. Stan Van Gundy went to the rookie and he delivered. The rookie, Queen Wade, has given Miami a dramatic game one victory. to the court. McDaniels tries to dunk it. Alonzo says, get the stuff out of here. And then Alonzo says, let me go to the other end. Let me just sprint. Let me outrun everybody else. And Muggsy said, big fella, for your work, here's your reward. Nice tap in. Complete the play on both ends. Alonzo morning. Alonzo leads the cheers. And that's all the cue that the Hornets faithful need. 254, Charlotte with eight blocks, zone now with five. In the third quarter, the Hornets hit four consecutive field goals after a two for six start. Three Boston turnovers, the Hornets shooting 60%, while Boston shooting 30. And the pressure continues. Kevin Gamble in the front court. Harris picks up the remains. He's got 16. 
18 points for Zoe. The Hornets 75-58 over Boston. 5-16 left in the third. Well, you have to say Alonzo only played 13 first half minutes, Steve. So he wasn't on the court a long time, and I think that would affect his rebound total. Still only has two fouls, too. McDaniel turns on Gill. Brown from the corner for three. Morning with his fourth rebound of the night. So had 30 points in the opener. 18 in game two, 14 in game three. Johnson. Kendall penetrates. Nice block by Xavier McDaniel. Good defense. Now, you had some communication going on with Larry and Kendall, but you got to set picks. You got to do a pick and roll that way. Hornets will take a 20-second timeout with four on the shot clock. They want to make sure that they get the right play on this situation. Joe Klein comes into the ball game. Hornets 50 to 7 advantage in points off turnovers this series at the high. And games three and four. So they have made the Celtics pay when they've coughed the ball up. Four on the shot clock. Comes into Zoe. We've got a whistle and a foul. And it's going to be on Johnson. That's four on LJ. Well, on the out-of-bounds play, the Hornets wanted to do the improbable look. They wanted to look for Alonzo. And Larry comes in, and he's moving, does a little extra. He just stays still, keeps his hands to his side instead of raising them. Would not have been a foul. Kenny Gaddison comes back in. He played key minutes in the first half. They'll call him in again to keep this lead the same. Brown, having all sorts of trouble, traveled to the ball. A real nice deep miss by Muggsy Bowes. Now you get a delay up game, maybe, on D. Brown. The travel call gives the Hornets the ball with four and a half to play here in the third. Great, great harassment by Muggsy Bowes. None better. None better. You know, with Warning and Johnson's and Gill's points, this series has still been Muggsy's. Yes. Del Curry. Yes, it has. That's a very good observation, Steve. Now, what's Deep Brown? He says, get this guy with me. I don't want to be here. He picks it up and tries to start again. You can't do that. He picked it up with both hands. That's why they call the travel. Block by morning. He stayed with it. Here comes Bones to Gill. Can't get the guy to dunk, and he gets the foul, however. Kevin Gamble, I believe, Steve. That's four on Gamble. The Hornets put you in such a go-back-on-your-heels mode once the steal occurs now. D. Brown tries to come in. Alonzo says, no, you can't get that. Not in my house. And then the fast break begins. And Kendall Gill going to the free-throw line. He has 14 points, three this quarter. You know, the players among themselves talking to Alonzo and talking among themselves, they have that saying, it's called taking care of your house. Now, Alonzo's house is in the paint. That's where the big man plays. Muggsy's house is out on full court when he's harassing. And right now, Alonzo Morning is taking care of his house. <laughs> Gill for two. Kendall, the second leading scorer in Hornets history. Del Curry being the first. Hornets with a nice modest run of 5-0, trying to up this lead to 20. 77-58, Charlotte. McDaniel, guarded by Gill. Hornets double nicely. Here's McHale. Nice work by Kevin McHale. Eight points for McHale, the 13-year veteran. Who, when the season ends, it will be his last. And the season may come to an end right here. He's been an outstanding player, Steve. Outstanding player. Bogues is open. Gaddison got a piece of the rebound. Kendall Gill comes back with it. A little hard on it. It was on line was that jump shot. It's a little bit hard. D. Brown back the other way for Boston. McDaniel travels. Good call. Obviously, Rev saw it. 
McDaniels was complaining that the ref nearest to the basket didn't make the call. He didn't have the angle, but it was clearly a walk. Darrell Garrettson caught it on the other side. The Hornets have gone a little dry, even though they lead by 17. They're one out of their last seven field goal attempts. But it continued to play with good defense. Good defense will sustain you while you're shooting wings. Nice steal by Xavier McDaniel and a foul by Curry. Now did, Mo did Curry get in before half court or after? Well, Darrell Garrettson motions that it came after because he's going to give him a two-shot foul because it was a clean path to the basket. Now here we will see Dale get hit by Xavier. Good defense. Xavier is going. Dale tried to get him, but he didn't get him until after the half court. Break in the action. Timeout called by Boston with the Hornets leading by 17. Right now, Proactive Solution has good news if you have a difficult pimple or sudden breakout and can't find relief. Because when you order now, you'll get the exclusive refining mask free with your three-piece kit. Just a dab, and the mask is designed to zap problems. It's fast. It's dramatic. Instead of hoping for an answer, use the mask, and you've got it. I use the mask for spot treatment sometimes. You know, I put it on in the evening before I go to bed, and when I wake up in the morning, you don't have acne, and you know, that's a good feeling. It works the fastest. It's potent. That's what I tell people. It's like my little skincare army. Call now and order the amazing Proactive solution to heal your acne and help prevent future breakouts. Proactive is the number one best-selling acne system in America, called Best Acne Treatment by Allure Magazine. I enjoy life more. I get out there and I do the things that I want to be doing without having to, to worry about the way that I look. And now, you'll save 50% on Proactive when you order in the next four minutes, just $19.95. Proactive's really, you know, changed my life. It's, it's changed the way people see me, and every hour of the day, I'm thankful for it. It's, you know, like gold in a bottle, really. <laughs> and you'll have the refining mask to zap problems it's fast, as it helps reduce redness and calms your skin. For on-the-spot pimple control, I use the refining mask. Just a little dab, that's all you need. It's a proactive exclusive, and it's yours free when you order the proactive kit at 50% off. I use the mask to cover my full face just so that I can make sure everything's even. It's great. Order in the next three minutes, and you can have the amazing refining mask at no charge. It's a proactive best product, and it's part of Proactive's best offer. I can tell it works. I know it works, and it's definitely my favorite product. Don't just dream of clear, beautiful skin. Make it real. Order Proactive now and get a free upgrade to priority shipping. Call 1-800-211-2155. It just makes you feel so good. Now you talk about the kind of comebacks that teams can make. You figure Boston probably has one more, Steve, and they probably won't manifest themselves until the beginning of the fourth quarter. When guys who have foul trouble, we won't worry about the foul trouble. They have none to take back to Boston with them. That's so right. you'll see a, a lot of uh, pressing and a lot of everything held to Skepter probably by the Celtics going into the start of the fourth quarter. Charlotte has but to fight that off, and this series will be done with. McDaniel hits the first. And then the second to cut the Hornets lead down to 15, 77-62. You see how Boston puts no pressure on the ball. They fall back, allowing Charlotte to get the offense started. Boston only has four minutes, four points over the last three and a half minutes. Addison finds Curry. That all the while the Hornets were in a slump. Morning collects himself down low and gets fouled by Kevin McHale. Well, that's key. You know, you mentioned the Hornets shooting was in a slump, but that defensive stat you just gave shows you again how your defense can sustain you. Nice pick and roll with Curry and with Alonzo. They seem to like to work that. Alonzo goes right to the basket, gets fouled on the left hand by Kevin McHale. Kevin looks around as if to not to know what happened. I'm sure he did. Alonzo finishes strong, didn't get the bucket, but draws the foul. So getting his chances from the line as he has had all season. He's fifth in free throw attempts in the league in the regular season. That's amazing for a rookie to find himself at that particular point. Morning. This evening has 19. David Wingate on the floor. Muggsy Bogues goes out. Alan Bristow looking ahead to the fourth quarter when that charge from the Celtics will be there and he wants fresh troops. So Wingate will come on. The Hornets go big. And Muggsy will rest for the final 2.20 of this period and uh, the two-minute break between. Morning. Hits them both. He's got 20. In 23 minutes. Pretty good production. 
Very good for them. <laughs> I had 20 in 23 games. <laughs> Ball in midcourt stolen by Wingate to Gaddison. Over Douglas for two. Great defense again. Force the steal. Get the basket. McHale comes back the other way on morning and draws the foul. And that's going to be three on Alonzo. One sixty-two, Charlotte in the lead with 2.09 left. The Horn is playing at good defense again, forcing the ball to be picked up in the air. A long pass, and that's how you can get your steal. Wingate comes up with it, hits ahead to Kenny Gasson, who can finish very nicely. And five steals at halftime, that's six. McHale makes the free throw. He's pretty sure on the foul line. You talk about pretty sure, you see how pretty unsure, again, the Boston guards are, particularly Douglas, picking up his dribble in the backcourt. You can't do that. that. That helps the team force you to cause the turnover. Ten points for McHale as he hits them both. The lead is 17 for Charlotte as we close in on the two-minute mark here in the third. Pick and roll, Morning and Gill. Lonzo wants to take Klein. I got him, I got him, fellas. Gamble there to help. Whistle and a foul coming up, I believe, on Gamble, and that's going to be five. <laughs> Klein so upset with the call. Kevin Gamble. Well, Alonzo wants to take Klein, and Gamble tries to come in and help, but he's moving. He wasn't established, and it was a correct call. He's moving into the path of Alonzo as he goes towards the basket. Boston over the limit. The Hornets have a foul to give. We're under the two-minute mark, so it'll only be one, obviously. And morning on the line for two more. Alonzo, Rookie of the Month, the final two months of the season, and Player of the Week in the next to last week of the regular season. Kendall Gill gets a rest. Tony Bennett is on. And playing into the second week of the second season, That's which right. is what counts more than anything else. And I'm sure he'll be happy to say of his rookie uh, cohorts who may get more individual accolades. You're watching me on TV. Second shot. Good by morning. He's got 22. Hornets by 19. Alonzo, third quarter points, 12. in the ball game as Gamble had to come out with his fifth. Morning falls as he gets the rebound. Here's McHale. Great hustle by the Hornets anyway. And nice basket by Kevin. 83-66. Charlotte's lead 17. Pick and roll. Morning and Bennett whistle and a foul. It's going to be charged, I believe, to Joe Klein. Trying to hold Alonzo Morning so that he couldn't roll. A pick and roll is pretty good. Alonzo is beginning to play it with several Hornet players because he understands he has the quickness to get to the basket. And Joe Klein just held Alonzo so that he couldn't roll. Alonzo does a pretty good job catching the ball on the run from a low pass, too, because he gets himself low. He's an outstanding player considering what has had to happen, Steve. Uh, several months using only one hand completely, but still managing to catch the ball efficiently off the rebound, off the pass, and managed to keep his offense at a high level. 20 points and 10 rebounds a game, as a matter of fact, through that entire stretch of the season. And that has to be a phenomenal feat that you can't un go without noticing how a person incapacitated to a certain point can do as much as the young man did. Morning tonight has done the job. 23 points so far. Make it 24. Hornets lead 85-66. Crowd on its feet. Here comes Boston. That's another walk they don't call on McDaniels. Couldn't hear a whistle now anyway. <laughs> with the shot. He's got six on the night. 85-68. Charlotte keeping that buffer. Boston's going to make the run. They've got to save it for the fourth. Another pick and roll. It's called a double fist. With Alonzo in the guard. Tony Bennett takes the shot from outside. Offensive foul. The foul on Alonzo morning. And that's four on Zoe. Not a good decision by Alonzo. He set the pick. And he sets the pick right here. You'll see Alonzo, as Tony Bennett comes off, set the pick. 
Now this is enough. He leans in with the with the shoulder. As he leans in and forces the contact, he, he is rightly called for the foul. Sidney Green comes in. Alonzo with his fourth foul goes out. He joins Larry Johnson in that category. Sidney Green did a very good job while he was in there in the first half. Here's Rick Fox. Banker too hard. Fox gets his own rebound. Fox's college coach is here to see him tonight. McHale with the jump shot. He's got 14, 85, 70. Celtics making a little run at it here at the end of the third. Well, that's a good effort by Sidney. Just couldn't come up with the steal, but he deflected the, end, the, the pass into McHale very well. Ten seconds left in the quarter. Pick and roll again. Tony for three. Big basket, Steve. Because the Hornets don't have a lot of offensive players on the court right now. It's a big basket. Here comes Sherman Douglas behind the back pass. Stolen by Wingate. Long court shot. Doesn't go. So ends the third. And look at the crowd as they enjoy a Hornets 18-point lead after three. What if you could learn shooting from perhaps the best shooter in basketball history? Now you can. Better Basketball, home of the world's best improvement videos, brings you the ultimate in shot instruction. An all-new three-hour DVD, Better Shooting 2. And as a bonus, you'll learn the shooting secrets of J.J. Redick. The video will build your entire shot, from footwork up to the finishing stroke. Buy Better Shooting and the entire Better Basketball DVD series today and start improving tomorrow. Call 1-800-BETTER-B or visit betterbasketball.com. This is Maya, and if she doesn't look too happy, she isn't. Maya, like many people, has too much credit card debt. How about you? Do you have five, 10, 15, or even $25,000 or more in credit card debt? Are your creditors harassing you at all hours? Are you tired of going through life feeling like Maya? I'm Todd Cook, founder of 800 Credit Card Debt. Day in and day out, we help people just like Maya, regular people who got in over their heads in credit card debt and want their lives back on track. At 800 Credit Card Debt, we'll help you find a payoff plan you can live with. One that could work with your creditors to eliminate penalties, lower your interest rates, and even reduce what you owe. Don't let the word bankruptcy enter your thoughts. Call us, because you can pay off your credit cards and still have money left over each month. And the best part is, you'll feel like yourself again. Maya did. Make the call today. Get rid of your credit card debt once and for all. Call 1-800-567-0182. Super Hugo coming right at you. One of his acrobatic dunks. And yeah, he likes it. And the crowd here at the Hive loves it too. The Hornets are one quarter away from going to the Eastern Conference semifinal. Their opponent would be either New York or Indiana. But right now, 12 minutes of business to take care of with the Boston Celtics. Our hustle stats led by Charlotte from the strength of Alonzo Mourning. Six blocks making up most of the nine total. Hornets lead 88-70. Boston with the ball. Sherman Douglas with the perimeter. Sidney Green finally gets the rebound but walked out of bounds. And it's going to be frantic for the next two and a half, three, four minutes because Boston, like a drowning man, reaching for straws. And they will try to hold on to anything and everything they can just to try to get back in the game. Sydney doing a little tight rope here. Ooh. Oh, and, and Sydney, you throw it off the opponent. You know, and Kenny Gasson, if you remember, got a real hard knock to the nose in game one from Kevin McHale. And I'm sure that that's all he needed was to get a ball into the snaz from Sydney Green. And he's headed to the sideline as Terry Koffler is going to watch over him right now. The Hornets will take a timeout. Basket coming back for Boston, making it 88 72. We're going to see what Boston has to offer here in the fourth with their season on the line. Curry left it short enough leg into it. Well, too open that time. He shot a, shot a set shot as opposed to a jump shot. Back the other way. McHale. And now Boston starting to make a run. Knew they would. Knew they would. 88-74. It has to happen here. If it doesn't, their season is over. 
Tony Bennett on the perimeter. Larry Johnson and Alonzo Mourning getting set to come back in. Wingate to Bennett. For two, left it short. Sidney Green gets the rebound and gets fouled on the way down. What a strong rebound by Sidney Green. And the foul's going to be on Sherman Douglas. Strong rebound by Sidney. No foul shot. Sidney looks like he's going to be okay. And he's going to come out of the ball game now as Larry Johnson comes in. After the jumper by Bennett, Sidney leaps in the air, gets the ball off the backboard. Sherman Douglas gets tangled in the feet and legs of Sid Green and falls on the Gluximus Maximus. Or rump. And now he's going to take it over and sit on something softer than the floor. That's a morning back in, so the Hornets are... We're in there with their big team now. With Gaddison, Morning, and Johnson on the floor at the same time. Bennett has it outside and kicks it to Wingate. Wingate, nice crossover. Here's Morning. Off his leg, good defense by Parrish. Good defense by Parrish and Wingate needing to take the shot, Steve. When you're not going to shoot it, people kind of know, and they didn't even go for the drive. Here comes McHale. Basket didn't go, but he got fouled. The Alonzo fourth foul probably is the one that you worry about the most. With 9.44 to go in the ball game, you don't need him to pick up his fifth because now you have to decide, do you rest him for three minutes? And while you're resting him, what might the Celtics do? So it's a key junction right now for Alonzo to put in two, three, four good minutes of defense without getting the foul. Two foul shots for Rick Fox, his first of the playoff series. Cuts the Hornets' lead to 13. And if, and if the Hornets make a substitution now, they make a substitution for something smaller. Exactly. And Boston, you know, will leave their size in to play. Johnson. How he saw Bogues, I don't know. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Morning, working. Got fouled. Got inside to a lot of traffic in Alonzo Morning. And all dressed up with nowhere to go. But he used his quickness and put the shot up, forcing the foul. Is he going to get a shot? Yes, he will. Now Alonzo looking at taking Paris. Paris goes for the fake, but keeps him underneath the basket. So the basket helps play a little bit of defense. As Alonzo turns, he turns into McHale, he turns into Douglas, but he gets the foul. McHale was the man who picked it up. That's his second. Second team foul on Boston here in the fourth. And morning to the free throw line with 9.23 left. tonight on the strike now 13 of 15 27 points outstanding stat that he's got 15 foul attempts wonderful that he's made 13 of them it shows how he will go to the basket you really have to admire him for doing so and look what he's done this series 83 percent it just parallels what he's done the second half of the season picking up his free throw shoot 28 points now for Alonzo 92-77 with his sixth ball. See, the Celtics now trying to speed the game up, and they don't have the players with which to do that. It's difficult. Muggsy Bones. Ball is loose. Johnson can't control it. Parrish does. Hornets by 15. Now, where will the Celtics go for the offense? They got to look quickly. McDaniel drops it off for Parrish, or McHale. Gill hangs on. Here's Morning. Good call. And you see the dilemma that the Celtics are in. They're forced to foul. They're forced to play a quicker tempo than they are accustomed of doing. And the Hornets still working hard. Mikhail tries to throw it off Kendall Gill. Kendall kind of sucks the chest in, keeps the ball, and the fast break is once again begun. Did you see Mikhail gaze at the bench and say, what more can I do? <laughs> Retire. Okay. They happen in eight minutes and 43 seconds. Morning on the free throw line where he continues to drill the 
Celtics. A deeper hole. 93-77 with 8.43 left to go here in the third. If the Hornets hang on, they wait for the winner of the Indiana-New York series. That series may start Sunday unless Indiana wins tomorrow night. Then game five of that series would be Sunday night in New York. And then the Hornets, if they survive, would start their semifinal series with the winner early next week. 377 as Zoe misses or makes and misses. McHale with it. Hornets will double big on it. McDaniel from the outside. Good rotation by Charlotte. McDaniel with a nice shot. It was a nice basket by McDaniel, but really good defense on McHale. Larry Johnson coming over quickly to help out. 93-79. Charlotte by 14. Morning open at the top. Use Gaddison for his screen. McHale with a rebound. This is where the Hornets defense again has to take over. If the offense isn't clicking, make the defense work for you. Parrish from the baseline. Douglas with the stick back. Douglas with seven. 93-81, 12-point lead. Celtics can sense their way back into this thing, and the Hornets... Crowd tried to implore their team back into it as well. Bogues has it. Yes. It is obvious that communication between Larry Johnson and Muggsy Bogues when the double comes from Douglas has been well thought out. Muggsy stays on the opposite side of the court, and Larry throws a skip pass to the other side of the lane. Muggsy wide open for the jumper. Parrish, bothered by Bogues and Morning. Now here's Douglas. Fox now with 10. This is his best game of the playoffs. The interior defense gets just a little bit lax. They're allowing the Hornets are Douglas to penetrate and the Celtics to get the ball a little too close to the basket. 95-83. Hornets here by 12. 6.53 left to go. Seven on the shot clock. Kendall Gill gets into it. Kendall's been kind of quiet. Hornets get the rebound back. Johnson. Calls for a timeout. 6.39 left to play. Alan Bristow wants to talk things over. 95-83 the score. The Hornets by 12 in game four. It's back better than ever. And now you can get the original Sonic Clean Between Machine absolutely free as part of our million-dollar holiday giveaway. So listen closely. You need, you need to floss, floss more. You're, You're not, not flossing, flossing enough. enough. I'd, I'd really, really like, like to see, see more, more flossing. flossing. Your dentist was right, you know, because flossing was the best way to prevent tooth decay, gum disease, and bad breath. Until now. Hi, I'm Steve Kettle, and this is Dr. Milner's Sonic Clean Between Machine. It's a Sonic-powered flossing system that's so unique, it's been awarded five US patents. It's easier, faster, and better than old-fashioned flossing and even cleans where floss can't reach. The Clean Between Machine gets deep between your teeth to remove pockets of hidden plaque, rotting food particles, and stagnant odors. No more awkward, flimsy floss to get stuck in your teeth and cut your gums. The Clean Between Machine glides gently between your teeth. It's a pleasure to use. Look, brushing commits everything that's between the teeth, but even flossing can't get it all. Look how much is left behind, but the Sonic Clean Between Machine does just what its name says. It gets between your teeth and really cleans them. And there's no better way in the world to clean around braces or get under tight fillings, crowns, and bridge work. The Sonic Clean Between Machine is compact and cordless, so you can take it anywhere. The Sonic Clean Between Machine comes complete with eight interdental brush tips for only $19.95. But order today and we'll include the gum stimulator, tongue cleaner, and convenient organizer, plus the toothbrush attachment, making your Clean Between Machine a Sonic toothbrush. Sonic toothbrushes alone sell for as much as $140. But wait, there's even more. Call now and get a second Sonic Clean Between Machine absolutely free. That's right, two Clean Between Machines with everything, including the toothbrush attachment for just $19.95. It's the perfect holiday gift. Not available in stores. Operators are standing by, so call now for this limited time offer. Field. Out to 
McHale. Celtics now within 10. McHale with 19. Crowd standing. Hornets in a little bit of a drought here. Larry Johnson shot blocked by McHale. Kale's telling his teammates to run while he walks. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, guys. Go down the court. I'll be there. Here's Parrish. Parrish guarded by Zoe. Basket doesn't go, but Alonzo. Now it's going to be Kendall Gill picking up the foul. That's a real good situation for Charlotte that it wasn't on Alonzo. That would have been number five. 85-85, the Celtics have cut this thing down from 19 down to 10, and Robert Parrish, a 68% free throw shooter on the regular season, 80% of the playoff is on the line. Chiefs had a good series. Gets the first. Get in line for those hard-to-get Hornet season tickets. Hornet hopefuls is what you should go for. A small deposit puts you in line for the hottest ticket in town. You see the number on the screen for more information. Well, this is what the Celtics would want to do, get the lead under double digits. And Charlotte's got to come down and get a good offensive play call. Don't need to have to rush it. you got to get the ball and get a good shot now. 95-87. Charlotte's lead is shrunk to six to eight. Back up to ten. That's a good shot. That's a good shot. Back up to 11 is give, a, give Del Curry a three. Timeout on the court by Boston. That's all that stands between Charlotte and the Eastern Conference semifinal. Well, Boston was on a 10-3 run before this happened as the Celtics got to within eight, but then Del Curry stepped behind the line and nailed the three. His first three of the night, fourth three-point shot of the series, and the Hornets lead it by 11. first round series tied at one Cleveland has come from five points down to lead by 11 in the fourth and they could go 2-1 up on New Jersey by the end of the night Hornets voicing their preference they want to spend the weekend in New York <laughs> well New York's Hornets may be ready the question is will New York be ready well I think New York's got a lot of things to think about Starks being ejected uh, showed the frailty of that team on offense and maybe even the psyche that's a little too high when it comes to playing rough Hornets still have some work to do Parrish his signature shot 20 points for the Chief tonight 98-89 Hornets lead is cut to nine it's a nice ball away jump shot very difficult to block Here's Gaddison down low. Will not double him. Fox knocks it out of bounds. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Kevin Gamble coming back with five fouls now. No sense in saving anybody as the season is on the line. Well, we can't take those fouls back to Boston. Nope. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. Here comes Kendall. Morning! What a follow. Great play. 189 Hornets. McDaniel silences the crowd. McDaniel having a pretty good night with 16. He's had a good season against the Hornets at 18 and a half points a game on average. 50% on the floor and nine rebounds. Well, he has to come up big because we talked about the deficiency in an offense that has lost some key players. Here's Gaddison in the lane. Gets fouled as he went up by Parrish, and that is going to be four, I believe, or is it five on Parrish? Let's check the foul total on him. Took his last play out, Steve. A miss by Kendall Gill and Alonzo Morning so quick to the rim. McHale can only stand and watch as Alonzo catches it and dunks it back. That's four on the Chief. Gaddison misses the free throw. Not the time of year or game to be missing Carson. That's going to be three on Parrish. 
Madison yeah. struggled from the foul line in the playoffs. Two for eight now on the stripe in the playoffs. Two misses. Boston has it back. Charlotte needs a stop. Good D by Kendall. Make the difficult pass inside. Harris sees Douglas. Nice feed to Douglas. Nine points for Douglas. Seven point lead for Charlotte. 193. Double fist, pick and roll with Kendall. Kendall knocks it down. That's a good combination to have Kendall and, and Alonzo running your pick and roll because somebody will have to step up and decide to guard either the picker or the roller. You can't leave either of those guys one-on-one. -on -one. And a foul away from the ball on Alonzo, and that is five on Zoe. Not a good foul. He wasn't going for a rebound, wasn't going for a block, just jockeying in position with Parrish. And here's Alonzo trying to hold Parrish out. Not the time. Parrish had not even received the ball. He's going to make the foul, at least foul, when we're trying to stop a basket from being scored. Fourth team foul on Charlotte. Both teams right at the edge of the penalty here with 309 left to go. The fifth personal on Alonzo who stays on. Muggsy Bogues comes in for Del Curry. McDaniel's open. And McDaniel bags his 18th point of the night. It's 102-95, seven-point lead. Daniel's 8 of 13 from the field, so he's having an outstanding night. There's Gaddison. Again, they're not doubling him. Kendall. This is it all. Parrish. Charlotte came up lucky on that one. Kendall came up with nothing but air. And Robert Perry seemingly a little surprised that the ball wound up in his hand. Gill one for ten in the half. Man. After a strong first half. Kendall got it going with the defense and getting the dunks, and that made the jump shot work. He hasn't gotten any steals or any layups this half. Got a break in the action as Charlotte calls for it with 2.40 left to play in the game. The Hornets' lead is seven. A message from the Obesity Research Institute. Today we're talking about what everyone is trying to get rid of, body fat. And this is what only five pounds of body fat looks like. With us today is Dr. Yolanda Suarez and some people just like you who have struggled with body fat. Doctor, what can people do to reduce body fat? Well, of course, diet and exercise helps. But now there's a product called Lipazine. And in a recent major university double-blind study, not only did people lose weight, but 78% of the weight lost was pure body fat, and they didn't have to change their daily life. In a moment, we'll give you a number you can call to receive a 30-day risk-free trial of Lipazine. With us now are some people who bought Lipazine and tried it. Marty, what was your experience with Lipazine? Being able to lose the weight without having to really work hard was really fantastic. I loved it. What about you, Robert? I didn't have to go to a a uh, weird diet or, you know, measure my food. I just ate what I wanted and I lost weight. Narda, what did your husband think? When the fat starts shedding off, my husband says, look at you. You know, I start looking in the mirror and I'm, mm, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Well, doctor, one other thing that I thought was so important about Lipazine's clinical study was that participants were not asked to change their daily lives. Tell me what exactly that means. The study done was a free living study. And what that means is that the participants were asked to take the product and change no other factor in their daily lives. And they still lost weight. And that's very exciting. Now here's how you can try Lipazine risk-free for 30 days. Call now to try Lipazine risk-free for 30 days for only $29.95. Call in the next 10 minutes and we'll double your order and include your shipping absolutely free. Remember, Lipazine is clinically proven to reduce your body fat and weight or we'll refund your entire purchase price. Call 1-800-424-3404. That's 1-800-424-3404. Call now. to the NBA's greatest game. With the owner of the Charlotte Hornets looking on, the Charlotte Hornets lead the Boston Celtics with 2.40 left to go on the fourth, 102 to 95. 
Well, you know, it's no time to get tense, but it's also no time to get careless. Seven seconds on the shot clock for Charlotte. 2.40 left to go on the ball game. The Hornets with a seven-point lead that at times threatened to go into 20. Boston making that patented run. Gill gets it to Curry. Curry, reverse doesn't go. And now Boston will use a 20-second timeout. Good play by Charlotte. They got the play they wanted. The ball passed to the interior. Dale just couldn't get it down. That's a good play. You set the block up, and the picks are all to your left. And Dale Curry just steps right into the lane. You think about Larry getting the ball, but you go to Dale because she's the guy you would think would get it. He just didn't get it to go down. Boston has to think about its strategy now, and then every opportunity they get has to be one where something is realized. You won't see the Celtics look too much from the outside. They're going to try to go inside and get a quick two if they can before they have to start thinking threes. Defense full court. Harry against Xavier. And Xavier's been hot. He's had the hot hand as of late. Gamble with the ball. Down low goes to Parrish. 2.23 left. Basket by Robert Parrish. Parrish gets it. And Boston drawing close to within five. Well, that's what you expect the Southern to do, to try to take it down low. Charlotte has to answer with the score, either from the foul line or a good basket. Now the Hornets only have one timeout left. Gaddison in the paint to Bold, seven on the shot clock. Gaddison moving inside. It's going to be Hornets ball with one second left. And what Charlotte did, Steve, was go to the people that they don't usually go to. Muggsy and Gaddison are not your first or second offensive choice. Therefore, you lose a shot clock situation and never having the ball being touched by your primary scores. You've got to go to Kendall. You've got to go to Alonzo. You've got to go to Larry. That's all there is to it. Johnson. It did not hit the back. It did not hit the rim. So the shot clock expires and Boston gets it back. Boston now has three timeouts. Charlotte has one. But what Boston has that is more important than that is they have the basketball. And they're on an 8-2 run. They trail by five. Douglas. Plagued by Bowles. And holding him off with that right hand. You wonder if they may call it. There's the double. Gamble on the perimeter. It's That's a three-point game. Gamble with 12. 133 left to go. Can the Hornets hang on and advance to the second round? And they have to be very careful with that last time out. It's a precious one, so they're not going to call it early. Here's Gill. Austin has turned up the defensive screws here. Johnson to Gill with five on the shot clock. Bowles. Morning Price for the rebound. McDaniel got it. Back the other way. Here's Gamble. It's Asking a one-point game, 102-101. And again, you didn't have your primary offensive people taking the shot. Larry Johnson has it at the point. The Southern's going to force him, try to force him to the left, and he'll see him double. Douglas with the steal. Boston in That's the lead, 103-102. use a famous isolation play that's known as Dallas with Larry Johnson and he's turned by Xavier and here comes Sherm Douglas we've talked about his poor ball handling all night but tonight he returns the favor turns the tables and comes up with the big steal to give his club the Celtics the lead by our count Charlotte is out of timeouts Kendall Gill at the top hampered by Fox Gill takes the shot Parrish with the rebound Took a very, very early shot in that possession. Fox calls time. Boston with two left. 
24 seconds left to go, 17 on the shot clock. Boston talks things over. Back here in Charlotte, Rick Fox. 10 second violation against Boston. Charlotte gets it back with 21 seconds left to go. The shot clock gone. The Hornets in a dismal drought. Five for 20. The Celtics have hit 11 straight shots. Boston gives the ball up to Charlotte. The Hornets will have one crack to do it. That belies the fact that the Celtics did not have the people handling the ball like they wanted all night. You said Fox would probably be part of uh, bringing the ball up the court, and this time he was a little slow in doing so. The Hornets now down by one. Tony Bennett is in the game, replacing Muggsy Bogues because of his half-court ability to shoot the jumper. Charlotte has not been able to get shots off in their half-court offense the last five or six trips down. Good defense by Boston. Johnson has it. They'll go to Dallas one more time. McDaniel plays way up on him. 15 seconds to go. Johnson spins to the lane, turns, puts the shot up. No good. Morning tries to tip. It goes to the corner to Gill. Boston Charlotte ball. 3.3 seconds left. Larry got the shot. He tried to get. Got it inside, but some tall timber to shoot over. 103-102, Boston. Charlotte out of timeouts. Here's Morning. The shot. Goal! Game over! It's over! Kenny Gaddison is your big man on the ball. And McHale will inbound it. 
The drama runs high here in Charlotte. I wonder why Mikhail inbounds it. He's one of the big guys that needs to be under the basket. If you're a Celtic, I don't understand that. Well, it only took Charles Barkley to execute this play against Portland in the last week of the regular season. Let's see how it's executed here. Mikhail to the rim.